Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the How Did You Learn to Do That podcast. Thank you so much for joining me for another great episode. I'm so excited to share the story of Ida with you. Um, I connected with Ida uh, a couple weeks ago um, to do my interview, but I also have met her through a collective that we're both part of, um, the Business Babes Collective. So I'm so excited for you guys to hear her story. She exudes so much positivity, so much joy, and I can't wait for you guys to hear what she's been up to since COVID started how she's been able to pivot her business and stay true to what she wants in life and brings her the most happiness. With that, if you could subscribe to us on YouTube, and if you're liking what we're sharing, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and like and share it and let all your family and your friends know about uh, the How Did You Learn to Do That podcast. And if you have any questions or if there's someone you want to nominate to be on the podcast, make sure you fill out our nomination form, which you can find on our website, howdidyoulearntodothat.com. Okay, so stay tuned. She'll be joining us just shortly. Hi, everyone. I'd like you to welcome Ida. Um, Ida is an amazing person that I've met and I've connected with through the Business Babes Collective. Um, For those of you that are on my Instagram um, or that already follow Ida, you would have seen an interview that we did um, a couple weeks ago. And I have to say that of all the people I've met online so far, she is such a positive influence. Um, she brings so much positive energy and happiness. And I've just enjoyed getting to know her and really talking to her. Um, and I'm so excited to have you all meet her and get to know her. So I'll share a little bit about who Ida is uh, before we get started. So Ida is a videographer um, who's known for helping, educating, and supporting clients as they share their story, create positive impact, and grow their business with video. She grew up with a camera in her hands, born in Poland and raised in Ontario. Ida inherited her father's love of photography. She learned to create the thrill of memorializing moments while working beside her dad at weddings. Her love for still pictures eventually evolved into video. And after earning her diploma in television broadcasting at Mohawk College, Ida opened up her business, Wonderful Ida. One of Ida's biggest assets are her ability to adapt and her thirst for knowledge. When, and when she opened up her business, she focused on weddings and family photography. However, her love of capturing moments quickly drove her to event coverage and visual storytelling. And while living in Brantford, she had a column in BC, partnered with Glenn Hurst Art Gallery. Did I say that right? Yes. <laughs> um, where she had a studio and talent photography classes. Her work is fe- was featured in city promotional materials for the city of Brantford. She hosted a segment on Rogers, shooting music videos and interviewing local musicians, and even returned to her college to teach a class on video production for which she hosted a show about photography. In 2016, she relocated to Vancouver, took a break from her business to work in the film industry in the grip department to satisfy her love of lighting. However, her passion for storytelling brought her back to her business where she worked with organizations with strong values that aligned with hers, including Minerva, the Neighborhood House Association, and Dress for Success to amplify their voices. Most of her client work started to revolve around capturing moments and interviews at events and workshops. So when COVID hit, she pivoted once again, and this time combining her love of teaching and video to start a YouTube channel where where she teaches others to film themselves, and she also helps not-for-profits turn their in-person workshops into video series. Small businesses leverage their knowledge by filming video courses and offering editing services to entrepreneurs who want to use video to grow their online presence. And as you can tell from today's session, her video quality is incredible um, and she looks so good. And just before we started, I I told her how her video quality looks so good. And I am just using a MacBook, um, the webcam on my MacBook. So the quality on mine is not as good, but Ida has been a huge source of knowledge um, and inspiration for me to um, create better quality videos and audio. And um, I'm so, so excited to have her join me today. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast, Ida. Thank you for having me. And ditto, I really enjoy our conversation. So I'm glad that I'm able to do this with you. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I know um, in your bio, you shared that your inspiration for photography came from your dad. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that, about how your dad inspired you to get into photography and videography? Yeah, so growing up, um, my dad 
actually has a slideshow of our entire childhood. Um, uh -huh. Photographer, he was the. I grew up in. Well, I was born in Poland, and he was one of the first photographers in Poland. He was actually the first photographer to shoot in color. It was wow. at the kids' communion, first communion. Um, and what him and his friends used to do is they used to walk around um, the city of Krzysz, which is a, like a small town. It's like a, basically like a, um, like a train town with a lot of rails around it. So a lot of people work in the train industry. And um, so he would walk around and take pictures of people and then they'd post those pictures downtown nice and big to show, the pe show people like the beauty of the small town. And I thought that was amazing because in a place where there's a lot of like trains and like post-war, he was able to like walk around and find beautiful things and demonstrate it and like display it for other people to bring joy in their life. That's amazing. Um, that's incredible. And so was that, um, did he, was that an exhibition in, um, in the city that he, where he um, showcased all that work or how, how did he do that? They just printed them and put them up and like caught the city by surprise because he had a studio, he had a dark room inside our house. So he was able to like shoot and then um, develop the pictures and then post and share them. Because back then there wasn't really, um, like photographers weren't that common. And so like you'd have in your city, you'd have like your priest, your doctor and your photographer, and they'd be at all the occasions because they'd be taking pictures when new babies arrive, um, at weddings, um, at funerals. So like, it was like, kind of like the person that knew everything that was connection uh, within the city. And so he would just take the pictures and share them with everybody to like, try to up the mood and make people happier. And his approach is always to like show the good moments, have fun, enjoy the shoot. And then that's what's like really resonated with me. So with a lot of my shoots, like I like to make sure it's fun or I show the positive side of something, even if you, it is easy to show like something for what it is, but taking that extra step to make it look better or like not better, but like just show a positive perspective of just a simple thing. I think it helps others and it like helps them see maybe something that they don't actually see there. Like, for example, um, I, w I went back to Poland when I was 25 and I lived there just to get to know my roots a little bit better. And I took this picture of a streetcar and my cousin who's lived there forever, she saw the picture and she's like, oh my God, you made our city look so pretty. I'm like your city is pretty because it's so easy to like, like your hometown is something that you're used to so it's nothing fancy but until somebody else comes back in through the outside lens and sees it they you won't see the beauty in it and then so I grew up in Brantford when I, we moved to Canada we moved to Brantford and Brantford has not been known to have like the nicest downtown and so when I left I didn't have the best opinion of Brantford but then after going to Europe and like traveling I went back and I started walking around with my camera and I took like the same thing my dad had always taught me just to show the good. And I started taking pictures of Brantford that were positive and happy and showed the pretty things. And that's when I got picked up by tourism in Brantford because they're like, you're making our city look good. I'm like, it is. It's just hard to see it when you're in it. You just need to like step out and see the bigger picture and look for what's good in there because imagery and I think photography and video aren't there to just show the bad or the, the what actually is they're, they're there to show you the positive way of seeing something the happiness in something make your day a little bit better yeah I think that's so that's I mean I if I was your dad I would shed a tear and I'm sure he was so probably emotional about it because he did something for his city you know, and then his daughter all these years later did something for the city she was in too. And I think that that's so incredible. And I have to say, when we did our interview, um, although, you know, I'm on video every week, <laughs> um, I still was a bit nervous because I was now on the other side, right, being interviewed by you. Um, so it was a bit nervous. And also, um, it was 630 in the morning. <laughs> and I think I mentioned to you that like, for me to get up, get dressed and get somewhere by 630, it's kind of a big deal. And so I wasn't sure if I was going to be, you know, on um, my best uh, game or like my best, 
showcasing myself in the best way because maybe I was too tired or whatnot, but I was nervous. But when I showed up, like, and the way you just like got out of your car and instantly were like mesmerized by the scenery, even though you've been there a few times and it was my first time. And the fact that you were like, this is incredible. And like, you took out your phone and just started snapping pictures. It took me like a minute to just step back and just pay attention to the beauty of the, that moment, of that morning, of everything that we were surrounded by. And it really did bring a lot of positivity and a lot of appreciation and gratefulness to me. Just, you know, just being, you know, just watching you and then being, um, having that gratefulness and that experience just exude in that energy. And then it totally absorbed in me. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. You know, this is so exciting. Um, and it really eased my nerves and definitely brought out the beauty of the moment and the beauty of where we were and what we were doing, um, and just everything. And I think like, you know, I'm, I'm definitely learning to slow down over the last several years. I've learned to slow down and appreciate the moment and appreciate what's there. But sometimes if I have something to do, I get too caught up in the, let's do this. What are the steps? What's next? Let's, you know, and I kind of lose the sense of presence of being in the moment and just paying attention and I remember sometimes you would just stop our interview and be like look at this fog it's so amazing and then I would look at it and be like what is with the fog like I don't like if I if it wasn't for your energy and if it wasn't for how you were portraying it and the beauty that you saw in it I would have never seen it either because I wouldn't look at fog and be like this is so amazing I would have just been like yeah, it's really nice, but like, uh, like you know, and um, I wouldn't have appreciated it the same way that you did. And because of the energy that you exuded in seeing the beauty, I really got to see it too. And I remember coming home that morning, I told my husband, I was like, we need to get up at 5 a.m. one of these days and we need to drive out to Deer Lake and we need to watch the fog. And he just looked at me like, who are you and where did you go? And what did you and Ida do? <laughs> like he thought like I was on something and I was like no you don't even understand how beautiful this is um but yeah and as you're just saying or not I realized that like I don't know if I would have seen it that way or I would have seen the beauty in that if it wasn't for you telling me how beautiful it was or showing me how beautiful it was by your excitement and by your enthusiasm and how grateful you were to have seen it in that moment so uh I it was an imagine. especially beautiful day, though. It was, like, the best fog I've seen all summer. Like, <laughs> epic and fog just, like, adds another element. Yeah, I get excited about nature. <laughs> and just, well, like, that's, well, that's what's amazing about, like, the way that you express that, you know? And I can only imagine what the city of Brownfoot felt when they, you know, noticed you and noticed all the work that you were doing to bring beauty to their city and your cousin also. Oh my god, uh, with, the, with the city of Brantford, like their graphic designer was like so happy that we met. And the year that I left to move to uh, Vancouver, um, I teamed up with like the city to create a full calendar for the city of Brantford. So I had like wow. photos displaying from like the four years that I, I was there when I came back uh, to school. And I had like the whole calendar of like all the pretty places and it just like I don't know it just felt like I left something behind when I left Brantford and it allowed, yeah. like, allowed me to close that chapter in a beautiful way and I was like so yeah. happy that they approached me and like will you be the images of our calendar and I'm like yes yes <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing yeah and I and I love that you say that about the city of Brantford because um, I've always grown up, I grew up here um, in the Lower Mainland my whole life, right? And, and you know, first in Vancouver, and then we lived in Burnaby for a while, and now we're in Langley. But I still, to this day, were, were actually up until a couple of years ago, I wasn't sure why people kept saying Vancouver is so beautiful. I didn't understand why people were like, everybody wanted to live here. I didn't understand why everyone wanted to take on the cost of living that's here, why it was skyrocketing. I just felt so like, what does everybody else see that I'm missing, you know? And then my husband and I, we left for, and because I had, I really hadn't been away from the city for more than like a couple of weeks, but my husband and I, we left for two months for our honeymoon and we traveled all across Southeast Asia. And I was so excited because, you know, you hear about all the exoticness of like Thailand and Bali and Singapore and all these places. And so we did 
the whole tour. And then at the end of that, we came back home to Vancouver and we were flying across to YPR. And I remember looking out and seeing the mountains and just seeing the water and seeing the city. And I was like, this is so beautiful. And like the first time we went to downtown to see, you know, in Cold Harbor, where it's so beautiful. You see the mountains and the city and the water and everything. I was like, this is incredible. This city is beautiful. Like, of course, people want to live here. Of course, people want to visit here, you know. And I now have this newfound appreciation because even in Langley, you know, some people are like, what? what's there in Langley to see? I'm like, it's incredible. There's so much to see in Langley. There's like such a beautiful community here. Um, and I just felt, you know, I found this newfound appreciation. So what you said about you need to just step out of it for a minute um to then take in the beauty and to understand the beauty I completely agree with that well and I feel with like photography and video like every place is beautiful and like at first when you get started as a photographer um like I started as with family photography so when you get started you go to a beautiful place with a family to take pictures of them and you're looking for the nice beautiful backdrop um, because you don't understand lighting quite well, quite yet. So the pictures are nice, but um, it's not until you start to incorporate lighting and like what's actually there. So like you start to see things completely different. Like now I can go into an alleyway and use light and allow that to look epic. And it could look like a most beautiful scenery versus like before when I would just think of like, oh, I just have to go to pretty places. And now I, I like I see any place as a potential be beautiful place. I just need to figure out where's my light source? Where's it coming from? What colors do I want to use? How do I want to portray this as a story? And it doesn't matter where you are. You can capture something beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Um and I love that. And so what, so when you decided you wanted to be a photographer, I know you had your dad as an amazing resource, but what was the first thing you, or actually, how did you know you wanted to um, do photography? Um, and what was the first thing that you um, did in order to make that dream come true? Okay, so I started like, I, my first wedding, I was 13, I assisted my dad. But my, we're immigrants. We, my dad didn't speak the language that well, so he wasn't able to make photography his full-time job. It was like a side hustle that he did, and I loved going to weddings. But growing up, I was always told photography is not a job. Like, this isn't how you're going to make money. This isn't some, a business. Like, you need to get a real job. So I went to school for kinesiology, thinking that I'm going to want to be a doctor or in the health industry, but that was not for me. <laughs> so I, instead, I started working um, in the tourism industry. So I was an activity coordinator for a few years. And I, I all of a sudden, I like, I saw, I walked by like a store and I saw like a Canon camera that was on sale. This is still a film camera. So I bought it because this is all before digital. And I bought the film camera and I started just taking pictures of it. And I, I was around students. We were going on like a lot of trips and adventures, parties. So I had plenty of opportunity to take pictures. And I take these pictures and I would usually do five rolls of film and I develop them every uh, Thursday and I'd bring them to school on Friday and like share the pictures with everybody. And they would all love them because this is pre-Facebook when you had to actually show them the physical pictures. And I, I like started to like love photography. So I did a trip across, well, I did a trip um, on the East Coast and I had a point and shoot camera at the time. So I went to digital and I'd kept this point and shoot camera in my pocket in a sock so I could easily pull it out and shoot pictures whenever I wanted to or whenever I saw something pretty. And when I went home after that trip, my dad's like, you really are starting to love photography. And I'm like, yes, like I really want to like try to do this. So he gave me his digital camera, which was like a fancy, my first, it was a Rebel uh, T2i, and he gave me that, and I just started shooting everything. I remember standing on the seawall, and some guy walked up to me, and he's like, what's your aperture? And I looked down, and I just read the first number that I saw, and it was 300, so I'm like, 300. If you know about apertures, apertures go up to like 22, maybe, like maybe 29. Like, they don't go that high, so I had no idea, and I was like, I have no idea. So I just used YouTube to teach me. 
and I wanted to learn photography. So I started um, putting out ads on Craigslist for male models or actors who needed headshots because if I was going to do this work for free, I might as well have fun and network and meet some hot guys. So (laughs) I started doing as many photos as I possibly could. And um, the the company, like the school that I was working for, uh, they had a director's conference coming up and they're like, for the director's conference, we'd like you to like make a photo slideshow. And I was like, yes, I'll do it. So I made, I walked around the city for the next couple months taking as many beautiful pictures of Vancouver as I possibly could and um, I took all the pictures and then when the director's conference came I was like that was my first paid photo gig I was like getting paid to like hang out and like at an event take pictures everyone loved the pictures and one of the I had the slideshow displaying on the tv monitors around and one of the um, directors from a school in Spain, he, his wife loved my picture. She's like, this girl, she's got talent. We need to bring her out here. So they ended up flying me to Madrid to do a month-long contract with them. And I was wow. like, hey, wait, maybe I can actually do this. Like, people like my work. So I first, I focused on becoming the best photographer I possibly can. And um, I was in Europe at the time. And so my dad came to visit me and my camera was like starting to break. I broke a lot of cameras because you can only take so many pictures and I'd take too many pictures and the shutter would stop working. And so my camera was starting to break and my dad brought a camera with video on it. And I was like, oh my God, this is the next level. So um, I started like filming my first video and I remember I was switching between like vertical and sorry vertical and horizontal and like switching the shots not realizing that you need to shoot one way the whole video to edit it together and I was like so excited about video and that year I was supposed to go to school for like when I came back from Europe I was supposed to go to school for um for advertising so I could learn how to sell my photography but when I was applying for school um I decided like I had my fifth choice that remaining and I'm like well why don't I pick something that I've always been interested in I've always been interested in television and video and so I just like check that and so because I got that video camera and I started getting like the the school that I was working with they like do videos for us we want more videos so last minute I switched my major from advertising to television and then all of a sudden like everything became video And at first, I really thought that I had to learn my, like, practice. So I had to learn video as well as I can. I had to learn photography as well as I could so I could start getting jobs. But I quickly realized that that's not what I needed to learn. I needed to learn business. My problem was I just loved doing it so much, but I didn't know how to sell myself and how to actually make money off of it. I remember Googling, like, how do you make money as a photographer? And now, like... 10 years later, I've like been working as a photographer, videographer, making like what I like making my projects and actually making a living off of it. But it wasn't until like I started to like focus on the business and learning how to grow that was it actually even able to develop like have more regular income and grow my business to where it is now. Yeah, wow, that's incredible. And the fact that someone from Spain noticed your work, that's, that's, that's so cool. And like, you must have been, uh, you know, over the moon to have been flown all the way to Spain to do this work. And, um, and, the, and, you know, yeah, just feel like I, I am a huge believer in that the universe just shows things to us and, you know, brings things to us. And just the fact that you were in Spain, and then, you know, your dad, brought you a new camera and it happened to have video and you were like, okay, this is what's next for me. This is where I'm going to grow from here. Um, and how that changed your trajectory for what you studied and what you do now. I think that's, that in itself is incredible because if those things don't line up and those things may have not happened, you don't know what you would have been doing now. Right. Exactly. Well, and I, I'm a strong believer that you need to try everything and you need to yeah. dabble in it before you know if it works for you. Like my biggest dream coming out of television school was to work for a television show and it just wasn't happening. And then when I moved here to Vancouver, I'm like, okay, well, I need to get into the film industry. So I did a course on how to grip and I started trying to get into the film industry. But then I like realizing that like, okay, I don't have to be working on Hollywood films. I can actually work on my own stuff and like grow my business and grow my little thing like has been like one of the biggest things 
gifts for me because like so often we're told that we have to strive to do something that's a, a certain level and we like we try so hard but it doesn't work out and then just accepting that okay you tried that's not for you it doesn't have to be for you you have to pave yeah. your own path and figure it out for yourself but without trying and at least giving it a shot I would never have been known okay no it would be better for me to do it this way so that effort and that like putting yourself out there it's scary and it like it's overwhelming at times but if you don't do that you're never going to get to the place that you should be at yeah I completely agree that you just have to do that work um and just take a chance and just see where it takes you and um you know and I I actually was talking to someone recently um, who use the word multi-potentialite, you know, someone that likes to do a lot of things. Um, and they don't always have to be connected or they can be connected. It doesn't matter. You can do, you can dabble in multiple different places and have multiple different things that you want to do. Um, and that's exactly how I feel too. I feel like, you know, I like doing the multiple things and dabbling into multiple areas. Um, you know, and when I was in university, I remember, I ended up graduating, you you would need for a four-year degree, you need about 120 credits. And I graduated with almost 170 because I spent some time just being like, do I want to be a philosopher? (laughs) You know, it takes a philosophy. I took a class on like religious studies and I took a class on gender roles and gender norms and women's studies and like, you know, and then I even took like a computing science class and like I have about a science degree but like, I just wanted exposure to like all these different other um, uh, pieces of work and these other kinds of courses and areas because I wanted to dabble into it and just see like, is there something here that I'm missing out on, you know, that I am finding so much joy and love from and how can I know if I'm going to love that unless, um, how am I going to know if I love that? And so in order to know it, I need to actually take a course and see if I love the content and I love the work and it brings passion to me. Um, yeah. And I think that um, for me, and you know, I actually am really interested to know what you mean by grip because I noticed that in your bio also you worked in the grip department, but I don't know what that means, but I would, I would love to know that. But um, I just want to share that when I was in, um, when I was younger and in, um, high school I remember I asked my parents because we're you know refugees from Afghanistan and I asked them like did you ever bring anything with you when you left Afghanistan because they because my family left like within like 24 hours like it was super quick um and my dad said yeah I brought um a camera right so we could take some photos because I was less than a year and my sister wasn't even born yet um and so he's like I brought a camera so it's like this like super like old school silver camera with where you like you like thread the film through (laughs) you know what I mean and uh and so he so he had it so I took it and I started getting film and I started like you know taking the pictures and then I was like oh I love this you know this is so cool um and I definitely took a course where I was you know in the dark room and testing things out and I loved it but um and I still to this day love photography but I just like like you said like I just I just you know, my family just was like, you know, photography is just a hobby, you know, it's not anything else. And I just never really invested that much energy and time into it after that one course in high school. Um, But I'm just thinking like, what if like, what if, you know, it's always that what if, like, what if I did invest the energy into it? What if, you know, what would that mean for me? And like, you know, and I have to say that your talent for photography and your talent for videography and what you do and creating content and um, all of that, I think is just incredible. So your goal of being the best is, you know, I think in my opinion, you've achieved (laughs) because you are one of the best that I've, you know, um, worked with so far. And I think that you, the way you, you just make everything look so good and so easy um, and so simple. So I think that that's, I think that's amazing. And you're, you're definitely achieving your goals. So well, it does get actually easy. The more you take photos, the easier it gets. And also, like, if you, it's something that you can, it's never too late to actually try because it's yeah, so easy. Sure. And, like, well, it, it, it does take a lot of work. Like, what, what I like, what I love most about it is that, like, no matter it, it photography evolves and it changes with you. 
So like I went through a dark period. I go through light periods and like it changed your perspective changes. Like when you learn from one person or you learn from another, it really molds who you are. And like, you just have to take pictures. And right now it's easier than ever to take pictures. You can do it with your phone. It's always with you. And so it makes it so like amazing. You just have to start thinking about taking pictures in different ways rather than like, rather than just take the picture, wait for a moment. <laughs> it like the two yeah. seconds can change everything. Wait for a moment or what, or just move around and get a different angle. Like one of my favorite things to do though is to shoot through a moment. Like when you're when you have the camera and you're filming or you're photographing and there's something that's happening in front of you and it's like a genuine, authentic moment and you get to capture that. And like there's there's different ways when you're shooting. So sometimes you're shooting and like you're not vibing together and you miss that moment. But when you're shooting and you're vibing together and you get that moment and you both like go through it and like get the nice shot and the moment happens it is such a beautiful and wonderful thing that just like gives you energy because you're you're sure you're the observer with the camera but you're also part of it because your observing eye is what captures it and what allows people to remember it later yeah yeah I completely agree I completely agree that that um, capturing moments is so, I mean, I can say being, having moments of my life captured, um, it's beautiful. And, uh, you know, and since having my daughter and my sister actually, it makes fun of me because she's like, I feel like you guys have a photo shoot like every month, but we don't, we have one like every like six months, you know, and it's just because I just, I just don't want to miss any moments. And I think it's because, you know, being refugees, I didn't have childhood photos. I don't have a lot of from when I was a baby. Um, so for me, I was like, I need to capture every moment of her, you know, and now I have like so many, um, so many pictures. Honestly, I'm not kidding. Um, I probably have up to like 30 terabytes of stuff wow. right now. Yes, I have lots of storage. So I've started storing stuff in 2011. 2011 and since then I have like everything I've worked on it's all like backed up stored so I can like go to it later I guess <laughs> yeah well that's actually that's actually a good question to ask you then um how do you how, what's your recommendation for how to store um photos and videos do you prefer um the cloud-based system or do you prefer like hard drives and I multiple think of four of both like um I have Hard like if, if something's really important, if I'm working on something, then I will save it on multiple hard drives because that way like I know that I have it. And if a project is live, I won't format my card until that project is out. Cause I've actually had I had it happen when I was first starting photography where I formatted a card with a whole family shoot and it was like obviously because so yeah, so um, I've had a photo shoot, like one of my first photo shoots when I first got started, where I formatted the card and I lost all the photos. And because I lost the photos, I think I remember them as like the most epic photos, but it was, it was like a sunset and it was so beautiful. And um, since then, like I make sure I have double, um, everything saved twice onto two externals while I'm working on it. It's on the memory card. And then I love, like, since getting Google Drive and, like, really working with Google Drive, I love Google Drive because on there I can have all my current work. So rather than having to go through my externals, I have, I can access my folders anytime. Like, I have um, a going photo album of just images of me that I can send to you for when you, I need to do promo shots or I have things that are, I can easily access. And I think that accessibility to it is great. But then also I do have, like, my externals around my house. This is my McFly for my drone. <laughs> um, that I, and I label them all depending on what they are and like keep them. And I haven't had an external break on me yet, which has been amazing. <laughs> but I know that you have to like keep backing them up and then like eventually just have, try to have as much of it as possible because you could lose it all on your computer and then it'd be gone and then it would suck. But you just yeah. need to like keep them and let's get back to like the question you asked before because we totally went over that missed this yeah. was the grip 
question. Yes. So this, like for film, um, the reason I wanted to do this because I've, I like light. I think lighting is really important. And for me, like when I'm watching a movie, I'm paying attention to lighting. <laughs> like I'm paying attention to everything else, but like good lighting excites me. It makes me happy. It like, I, I can talk about lighting for hours and not give board it's something that I just love and I wanted to learn lighting I wanted to learn lighting from the professionals and in film there's two there's two well three people that are kind of in charge of lighting so the DOP or the cinematographers they do the shots and the DOP is going to tell you like how they want the light set up and the DOP so the director of photography um, they're in charge of the key grip and key um, key gaffer which the grips, the grip, the key which just means like the leader of them. So like the key grip and the gaffer is like the leader of the light lighting oper light ops. So like anyone's doing lighting. So with lighting, there's two departments. Lighting is um, the electric. So they're in charge of providing all the electricity and putting the lights in the right direction. So like, um, mm -hmm. and like they'll put them on the stand. They'll just put the lights there, but their lights are bare. And then the grips they're in charge of the movement of the camera so like if you see the camera moving for a dolly the grips are in charge of that and they're also in charge of molding the light so with light they will come in and they'll put the diffusion on it so the light ops okay. come up they put the light and then the grips will show up and they will add diffusion or block lights in certain ways so that they mold the light so it looks nicer and that's why i went into that field so I could actually learn more of these lighting setups so I'm the grip that's like obsessed with lighting trying to talk to everybody about lighting the entire time I have my notebook that I bring to set where I make like diagrams of the lighting setups because <laughs> that to me is most exciting <laughs> and like figure out what camera angles they're using i usually trying to talk to the camera ops and see like which lenses they're using for the shots or what their setup is and why they're choosing to do that. Cause for me, that's exciting. And I love like just being able to like play with the camera and put it together. And so that's why I, I went into the grip department so I could be in charge of like the camera movement and molding of the light to like really learn, well, what is it that they do? How do they make it look that much better? Yeah. Wow, that's I didn't realize there was so much that went into lighting and um and get, yeah. yeah. Like, honestly, like just setting up a light in front of you is all the difference. And um like how you place them and what you play like where you place them um makes it like allows you to have like a different mood, allows you to like create something more watchable. Yeah. I find that like the camera doesn't matter as much as the light does. Yeah. Even though so. like, you want a good camera, obviously, but yeah. if you can light it well, you can make it look good even without a good camera. Yeah, I completely agree. And so, so you can tell, um, for those of you listening and watching, you can tell how easy it is to jump off topic with, um, with Ida because she's so passionate about what she does. She's so passionate about photography, about lighting, about videography and all the aspects that go into it. Um, so you do have to check out her videos because she shares so much knowledge um, on those videos with you and she and she has a couple courses too and you can connect with her um, directly and she you know will help you out and um, she definitely has great services also and I highly recommend her if you're looking for photography or videography um, for your business or for yourself or your family um, well I don't know if you still do family photography I, but I don't offer actually I this year um, starting with COVID I finally made the break or like the choice that I'm no longer offering photography. Oh, okay. I'm not giving it like, because I found that like, I used to love editing photos and it was so much fun. But recently I've gotten into video and the yeah. difference between like what I used to think before is I used to love editing photos because I could still watch Netflix and do all my work and it was great. But now since I've started like really focusing on storytelling, editing video has become something that's so much more fun for me because it's like a puzzle. 
So like when I sit down with all my footage, it's just there. And then I get to piece it together and create something that really wasn't there. Like if you see the before and after of some of the videos that I've edited, you'd be like, what? How, how did you like get this out of this? Like I remember an interview I was editing a couple weeks ago with, I really like, I thought I had nothing from this interview. I'm like, this interview is not going to work. And I'm like, okay, well, let's just keep trying. I like, I went, like, I, I kept working on it until I couldn't work anymore. So I got my partner to come in and do like his version of the edit. And as soon as he did that, I saw, I finally could see the story. And then I put the our both our versions together. And then looking at the edit, he's like, "How did you do that? She did not <laughs> say anything, and you made it sound like she did this fabulous story." And I'm like, yeah yes <laughs> so, like a lot of like the behind the scenes like you see the videos you see them edited you don't see like what actually goes into creating the story out of this because a lot of it like it doesn't make sense and it's a lot of like eliminating things and figuring out how to piece it together in a way like if you move the location of a couple clips it can change the whole story wow and that's what's magic about like creating videos so that's why I got rid of photography and I'm focusing just on storytelling and videos yeah. because it really like it it fills my soul <laughs> yeah well that's that's incredible yeah so so yeah so if you want to know about videography and you want to connect with Ida about videography connect with her and I'll have all her um her Instagram and all the ways you can connect with her on the show notes um so you can check it out there but that actually is a really good segue into the question I had next is that how do you how do you stay true to what you find the most purpose or the most value in um or that brings you the most excitement um and you know keeps that drive going and how do you align yourself when you realize that you're starting to do something that maybe isn't or I don't know if you ever have actually but if you've ever felt where like you started doing something that you're like this is no longer bringing me as much joy or as much happiness as it once did but you know and like you said the when you, with the video like when there is something else that you're like, I want to spend more energy on that. How do you have the courage or the ability to be like, okay, I'm no longer going to do photography, for example, and I'm going to focus fully on video when photography is something that you've invested so much energy and time with. And I know for many of us, like when we invest so much time and energy into something, we get, we end up getting to that place where we don't have the courage to say, okay, I need, I've grown from this and I need to move on from this into this other area where I have so much joy and so much passion in. So how do you, how do you check in with yourself to know that you're continuing to live your why and your um, purpose and making sure that you are staying true to yourself and what brings you the most happiness? Well, I do have, I've been focusing on my goals and really like working to where I want to work and working on my values. So I do have next to my desk, I have photos printed and they have all my like goals for this year. So I can like simply like look over and see what direction I want to go. But I find that like letting go of something, you just need a bad experience. And that like, like I had an experience this, like this year where I was thinking of putting photography back and I was like still scared and hesitant of it. And then I had an experience with a photo shoot and the photo shoot, the, the, the lady wanted me to take photos in a way that wasn't really true. Like the amount of Photoshop to like very insecure about like who she was and like they reflected and it just drove me like it, aggravated me and it just showed me that like no you don't want to do this this isn't what makes you happy so like having those bad experiences with people where you're like able to like you're trying to let go of something and then like you have your next experience and it probably won't go so well because your heart's not there so more yeah not there anymore and then you have to be like okay accept the fact that if I'm going to keep doing this it's going to lead to this experience I'm going to feel unhealthy after it I'm not going to feel happy I'm going to get the stress and as soon as I let go of something or let go of photography a lot of my stress just went away because I wasn't trying to like I find that like so often we tr try to be something that we say we are or we just try to be something because that's where we think we're gonna go but letting go of it and just like moving on and like following what really is you 
is the best way to like make yourself healthy, make yourself happy. And if you're not happy, you're not going to be doing your best work. You're not going to be into it. Like I was not having any fun at that photo shoot because of like all the limitations that were put on me and because it wasn't, it wasn't what got me anymore. And so like, you have to like know that like you can't just do the same thing every day yeah. and expect different results or expect to be happy if you're not happy in what's happening. You have to keep moving and evolving. And unless we keep changing and evolving, we're not really doing anything. So one of like the biggest things for me is I've constantly like learned to adapt and I thrive and change. If I don't get change, like I need change. And it's something that like unless I get it, I, I see it portrayed in other ways. And since like letting go of photography, I have felt healthier. I've actually been more active. I've been happier. So like, it's scary to let go of it, but you have to do it for yourself. You have to do yeah. it for the future you that is going to be a better person. So oftentimes, I, if I'm worried about something, I'm like, do it for future Ida. She's going to love this. It's going to make her life better. So don't always live in the present, but think of where you want to go. And unless you make steps to get there, you're going to stay in whatever situation you are. So think of future you. Yeah, yeah I love that. Think of future you. That, you know, that's going to go on my wall. <laughs> it's going to say, and underneath it, it's going to quote you. But, you know, I think that that's so true that you need to just think of the future you. And I think you know, and I'm a huge, I do this all the time. The moment I feel, I, and I always use the word deflated. As soon as I feel deflated about something I'm doing, um, then I need to self-reflect upon that and realize like, is it this singular instance or is it just like a culmination of things that um, are no longer bringing me joy by doing this anymore? And I think that what you're saying um, about how you had a bad experience with photography and how you realize that that's not what's bringing you joy and happiness anymore. Um, and it ends up being more work than fun. And, you know, and I, I think that a lot of us, actually many of us, we're probably trying and working towards creating something for ourselves or creating a life for ourselves that's less work and more fun. Um, because even though you work, um, and I say this all the time with, with this podcast and with my brand that, even though I'm working so hard on this, um, I don't feel like I am working, you know, and that's so cliche to say. It's just like when you when you love what you do, you no longer feel like you're working. And that's super cliche, but um, I feel like it's really true. It's it's and I felt that very strongly. And um, yeah, and just being having that space to realize, like you said, that um, this isn't for you anymore. It doesn't bring you as much joy. And having the awareness to realize that by letting go of that or moving away from that um, thing that you were doing, what that will do for a future you. I think that has, you know, you have to have a lot of awareness for that and a lot of self-reflection. And you need to be very, very clear on what you want um, in your purpose and in your life and, you know, and why you started doing what you started and where you want to go with it. Um, having those clear, um, clear metrics or those clear statements for you to reflect upon, I think is so true. And, um, and I know you've, um, your, your thing that you have on your wall, I've, uh, you've shown it to me briefly and, uh, and I absolutely love it because I think that that is amazing. And actually we both attended the, the, um, back to business conference, um, a couple of weeks ago or last week. Um, and I remember at the very first speaker, Vivian K, she had those affirmations and I printed it the moment she said it. And I have it on the side of my wall because, um, and it, you know, and it says, take a deep breath. And my favorite one is take a deep breath and remind yourself who the F you are. <laughs> You know, I was like, okay, like when I saw that, I was like, this needs to go on my wall because that's the exact thing. It's like, sometimes you get, you know, like you, your experience of having to overly edit um, and Photoshop those images. It's, you know, you have to remind yourself who you are and you have to remind yourself what you're here to do and, um, and what your style of photography is and what is okay with you and what's not okay. Um, and when you know who you are, then you recognize those things. And I think that's amazing. 
Um, and so that actually moves me over to now that you're into videography and I know you've been doing the interview series and I had the honor of being one of the people that you interviewed. Can you tell us a little bit about that interview series? How did you think about it? Um, why did you want to do it? And what have you um, experienced by doing the interview series? So I started the interview series on um, around the time Black Lives Matter started happening. And I like as soon as Black Lives Matter became so big in June, I took a break from my social and I wanted to have the voices of other people on my Instagram. So I put a call out there to asking if somebody would want to talk about the Black Lives Matter movement. And I met Shalana, who's an amazing human. And she said, yeah, she'll do the interview with me. So I was really excited. And um, so I filmed an interview with her and I had so much fun with her. And I thought, well, why don't I do more of this? Like, why don't I share more people's voices? So at the time, I, my goal for this year has been to produce more of my own projects rather than reacting to projects that come my way. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to give myself a challenge. So I challenged myself to interview 14 women this summer of all different voices and film videos for them. And I didn't want me to be the one guiding these interviews or guiding these people. I wanted just whoever wanted to share their story. I reached out to some people and whoever just reached out to me. I did, I did a Zoom call with them and I just wrote, I just let them talk. And I wrote down everything that they were saying. And out of that, I tried to piece together a story or a topic that we could come talk about that's relevant to what they were talking about. and. I had so much fun with it because then I came out with questions and I let each of them be themselves. So there's no, if you look at them all, there's no real theme for them. It's just all different topics, different people talking differently. So some are about specific things or teaching you and some are just stories of people's stories. And for me, it has been such an eye-opening and amazing opportunity because I allowed it to guide me and like allow other people to take me to wherever it was going to go. And I really enjoyed it because not only did I get to meet some amazing people and share their stories, but I've had so much fun editing these and like piecing them together and like trying to create the best story possible. And I've just love the experience overall so I think I'm gonna do this like as an annual thing and bring it back next year but except next year I'm gonna give more structure to it and allow it to like revolve and grow but I find that like by just doing it and by just like letting it guide me it showed me so much more than if I would have been like okay I need to do this like how much money am I going to make off all of this like where's this going to go like how what is everyone going to talk about like taking out that whole like that whole assumption of what I wanted it to be and just letting it be allowed me to get more out of it than I ever expected and it's just helped me grow as a videographer and a shooter and allowed me to shoot and meet people that I wouldn't normally shoot or meet yeah yeah I completely agree I think that that it's been amazing and you know just um, you know, being uh, one of the people you interviewed, I remember we did our Zoom call and then I got the list of questions. And um, although I do a lot of self-reflection uh, on myself and, and this brand, the questions you asked, some of them, I was like, I actually have not thought about this. Like I have thought about it in my head, but I haven't asked a question the way that you asked it. Um, and I just, you know, it actually was amazing because it made me, it gave me time to self-reflect and just like, review the questions and just really think about it and ponder upon it. And it, and it allowed me to get more clear about my goals um, and where I want to go and what I want to do. And I think that that is, you know, you, and, you know, when I did see the questions, honestly, I thought maybe these were like generic questions, but when I saw the questions and they were tailored to me um, or what, how, that's how I felt that they were like questions specifically for me to think about I was like wow like you you are so talented in taking like a short zoom call and like knowing what I do and knowing like what this 
podcast is about and knowing what my brand is about and like uh, developing these questions that go deeper and dig deeper. And I think that that in itself is a huge talent, talent that you have. And, um, you know, I, I'm glad that you've enjoyed the experience and you've met your challenge um, and being on the other side and being someone that um, was interviewed by you. It was such an amazing experience. So I really, so thank you for that opportunity. Thanks for challenging yourself so that um, we could hear the amazing stories of all the people you've interviewed. Well, thank you for being part of it. I really enjoyed our, our morning meet. And it was like, it, and like, I know the question that like you really liked was like what you want people to feel when they're listening to your podcast. And I think that like a lot of the questions that a lot of people ask are typically like the same questions. And unless you ask, like when I'm interviewing somebody, I found that like one of the best ways to like interview them is ask questions that kind of throw them off or aren't typical yeah. of what other people ask because then they can actually like give real answers. And unless you have that real answer, it's not an authentic, it's just a staged thing that's not really gonna connect with anyone. Well, it can connect with some people, but it, it's not as much. Like I love getting deep and like personal and really getting to know people because that's what we're here for. We're here to make connections. We're here to like grow from each other. We're here to be authentic, genuine, and just be us. And, if we're not that, if we're just being robots and saying the same thing to everybody, it's it's just lost. There's like so much connection that we are losing that we could be making. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I completely agree with that. Um, and I completely agree with what, um, you know, asking those questions that throw people off, I think is, is incredible. And I think that um, I really loved you know, hearing your story. And I, and for me, and like when I do these um, podcast interviews and I do, um, or podcast recordings, and I do let people know that I want to know more about them as a person and less about their brand. Um, that's the part that I, I feel like it throws them off and they're like, well, like I am my brand or I only want to talk about what I do for work, you know? And I'm like, no, I want to get to know you as a person. And I think that for you in particular, though, I feel that you're what you do um, in your work, in your videography, um, and in, in your photography, I think that who you, who you are and the person that you are um, is, is the person that, you know, we see on Instagram and we see sh in your videos. And like, there is no difference between wonderful Ida and Ida, you know, there's no difference there. It's just like you're the exact same person and the, there is no person behind the brand that you, you exude those stories and you bring those um, experiences and that knowledge as authentically as anyone that I've really ever seen. So um, I think it's amazing. And I, and I know like before we started this recording, like we just started, you know, talking and going, you know, for a while and going off tangent and talking about this and that. And I think that just speaks to like how much passion that you bring to what you do and how much joy and positivity and excitement you really exude um both in what you do but both as a person and um and it's been so great to connect with you oh and you as well and thank you for having me it's been like I love your podcast I love that you're able to actually have authentic questions and like you actually gear it towards the person which is amazing and I'm sure so many people get so much out of all of these conversations and like really get inspired because I know I did before I even reached out to you I've listened to your podcast and I was like wow this is really good so congratulations <laughs> thank you started here <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much um I really appreciate that yeah and I just love I love hearing that feedback that you know that you you enjoy the podcast and that you do um find you know the authenticity that I do try to share um, through the podcast and through the stories I think is is really good um, I do want to ask you though just before we wrap up if you could go back to when you were 13 and you shot that first wedding with your dad what piece of advice would you give yourself at that moment uh, I have one piece of advice that I always give myself and it's something that I've always like um followed in my like in my life and it's just like keep doing what makes you happy don't care yeah. about anything else just do what makes you happy my wish yeah. for myself always is just so I'm happy and so just continue to do what makes you happy and you life awesome. will figure itself out for you 
Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. I love that. Yeah, just do what makes you happy. It, it's so simple. And you, 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 you know, you think like, oh, that, that's so simple. Like, just do what makes you happy. But it's so hard to action. Um, and it's so hard to stay true to that. Um, Especially when you have to like, let go of things. And you have to like, you know, that like certain things aren't making you happy. So you have to let go of them or you have to make those tough decisions because it's not working for you or you say you're going to do something but it doesn't work out and it's scary to like be like no that didn't work out I was not meant to do that but then as soon as you like find that guiding force within your happiness like you'll get over it and it will make your life better so think of what future you is going to want and that's the only way that you can be happy in life is if you're always thinking of like what makes you happy so like one of my like the best things that I've learned, one of my favorite things that I've learned is your energy doesn't like your strength is not what you're good at. So because you're good at something, it does like because I can take photos doesn't mean that that's my strength. Your strength is whatever gives you most energy. So follow your energy, follow that happiness, what makes you excited, because that's the stuff that you should be doing, not yeah. like not not the writing that everyone says you're good at, but you really hate doing, that's not Mm -hmm. your strength. Your Mm -hmm. strength is whatever your energy comes from. And your energy is what's going to make you happy. So just listen to yourself. Because unless you do, you're going to be too busy thinking of what other people want for you. And you're never going to find that happiness. So you just do what gives you energy and what makes you happy. And you will find it within you and future you is going to love you for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And that's, a, that's an amazing way to wrap up the conversation. And um, I think that you're, you're so inspiring. And, and I think for anyone that's looking for, um, you know, a huge dose of excitement and positivity, definitely check out uh, Wonderful Ida on Instagram. And I'll, like I said, I'll tag her um, on Instagram, but also I'll have all her links on the show notes for you. Um, but yeah, I think that you you know, you're so, you can tell by the way you, you know, do your work and the way, um, you've planned out your, your next steps and your goals and, um, and the way that you exude yourself, you can tell that you're very strong in your goals and you're aligning yourself really well with your why and your purpose and really what brings you the most happiness. And I love that you said that you had to, once you decided to take the leap and to let go of photography that you were actually able to feel healthier and happier and you made more time for yourself to do the things that brought you the most happiness and joy. And sometimes that's exactly it. In order to make yourself happy, it's like you said, that future you. And sometimes that is letting things go and not thinking of like, what's my next job or like, what's my next like work piece, but like actually saying, you know what, I'm going to let this go because I'm going to now create that time for myself to be more active, to um, get to know myself more, to connect with myself more, Um, you know, and that part in itself that makes so much happiness and that brings so much more joy to you um, than staying in something that doesn't bring you as much happiness anymore. And I think that that's so amazing that you've shared that. And, um, and I absolutely love that you actually have shared so much with us about you, about your work, about um, the things that you do to keep yourself aligned um, and to know what's, you know, right for you and what's making you the most um, happiness that you can. And I think that that in itself just, you know, speaks to the strength of the work that you do, the strength of who you are as a person. Um, and it's, you know, it's not just, and I always say this, that when some, when you, when you just, you know, you, someone asks like, what do you do? Or, you know, that question of like, what do you do? I always find that one's a little bit, so like, it irks me a little. Cause I'm like, I could say that, you know, like I'm a photographer, <laughs> you know, but that doesn't, that just like puts you in that box. But what, what you are and what you do is actually way more than that. Um, and there's so much more that goes into that work. Um, that you know that's not always seen in the forefront um and and for me personally it's not just that I you know have a podcast (laughs) you know it's like there's so much more like that I'm honored to have such amazing stories um such amazing insight that impacts people and I think yourself too with the work you do it's all about impacting um impacting people and sharing stories and um and the fact that you've gone into visual storytelling 
um, I think is incredible and, and you're definitely talented in that. So um, we're so grateful to have, have you in this, um, in the community and to have you share your stories because it's been, it's been incredible. Well, thank you for having me and thank you for all the kind words. I'm like going to be on a high for the rest of today. <laughs> thank you. You should be. You're so good. And you, um, yeah, I definitely, um, I know like through the community that we met and stuff, like just seeing you pop up and just seeing your energy um, come to light, like just through Instagram, which, you know, I feel that there is a lot of energy that can come through Instagram, but when you're reading through comments, you don't always see as much energy and just, you know, whenever you would comment on something, I'd always be like, wow, like, she's so cool. <laughs> you know, you know, like, I need to connect with her. And I'm so glad that we did connect and uh, be able to to do this podcast. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. So for everyone that's still um, wanting to connect with Ida, like I said, I will link all her show notes, um, all her links on my show notes. And, um, and I will take her on Instagram and all other social media accounts that I'm on. And if you want to reach out to her, you can. And, um, and yeah, and so do you want to tell them a little bit about what, uh, what kind of services you offer and what people can reach out to you um, to connect with about? So yeah, so um, I used to do a lot of like events and lifestyle things before COVID. But since COVID started, I really started focusing on online and education. So what I've been doing now is I've worked with non-for-profits to transform their workshops into online video series so they can share their knowledge with people that really need it. Also, um, I've worked with course creators to actually film and edit their courses for them. And then I've also offer editing services. So if you create videos but hate editing and need somebody who is fast, efficient, get them done for you send those videos my way let's talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's awesome I'll definitely have to reach out to you too <laughs> for my course um but yeah thank you so much for being here today I've so appreciated it um and yeah and you know it's been such an honor to have you on and um so great to connect with you also well thank you for the great talk and the great like pep in the morning <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome Thank you so much for listening to the end of that episode. I hope that you took away so much knowledge, so much experience, so much love, so much positivity that Ida had to share and how she shared and how she sees true to herself and her and why and what brings her the most happiness in the world. And if you have any questions, feel free to connect with me and I can connect you with Ida or you can reach out to her directly. If you could like, subscribe and share our podcast with all your family and your friends to help us grow the community, that would be amazing. And we would forget forever be grateful. And if you have any questions or if there's anyone you want to nominate, um, as always, feel free to go on our website, how did you learn to do that.com and fill out the nomination form and we'll see if we can get them onto the podcast. Okay. So you have a wonderful day and we'll chat soon. Bye.